Hi guys, it's Sue. <laughs> We're going to paint our elephant plate today. Um, in your kit, you'll have your colors, your Dedham Days glaze. Um, you'll, you'll need some sort of sponge. I'm just going to use either or to show you your transfer and your plate uh, and stuff to d uh, dab with. If you don't have a dabbing tool or a dotting tool, then um, back ends of brushes make awesome dots. Okay, so on your stencil, we're going to take this um, backing paper off and we're going to, if you can, if you can. Take the backing paper off, leaving the front uh, transfer. This really wants to stick to each other. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to take the backing paper off just by, oh, it's not stuck. If it's not stuck, then you can just kind of give it a good scratch um, to make sure all the little bits stick to the transfer paper because we really need that to be on the plate. So let's try this again. Hold that for a second. So what I like to do is I actually like fold this back a little bit and I find that it it comes off better that way. So you want to make sure that you're leaving the white stuff, the white vinyl, or whichever color I gave you an elephant in. It varies by what I had available. <laughs> um, down behind. off. It can be a bit of a pain depending on the transfer paper and how well burnished it is. Uh, I would suggest that you, before you start pulling this off, to actually take a credit card and really rub hard uh, over top so that it sticks it to the transfer tape. Okay. Of course it's going to give me a hard time. <clears throat> so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take off this uh, backing. We're going to stick this whole thing to our plate and then we're going to sponge. We're going to sponge in and we're just basically going to leave the outline of the elephant on our plate. So it's pretty easy once we get going. You'll be like, oh, it's just all dots. It basically is all dots. <laughs> We're just filling it in with dots. So you can see sometimes this, this front has been on here for a long time and that's probably why it's giving me a hard time because I've had this transfer paper on for Quite a while. Okay, we're doing good. Jess is in the back ripping paper. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm at the Niagara Falls studio today um, doing this. I came here literally just to do this for you guys. I was supposed to be off today. Well, actually, I was supposed to go to Niagara or to Guelph to do a Run for the Cure paint uh, event, but. Nobody signed up, so um, so I could have taken the whole day off, but I decided to get this knocked out for you guys. Isn't that nice of me? <laughs> could have spent the day cuddling Mr. Winston, but no, here I am. <laughs> okay, so I've got my um, stencil. I'm going to take my plate. I'm doing a different plate than you guys just because I don't have any more square plates left. You're going to put your stencil down where you want it on the plate. Um, this one I'm going to kind of go right in the middle and give it a good rub. See, mine's swooped. Yours is going to be flat, so it's going to um, stay down really nice, but mine is on a plate that has a um, bit of a curve to it, so my stencil is not going to be as nicely down as yours will be. Flat is better. Flat is better, but we'll do what we can. Okay, so I might have a bit of a bleed right there because my stencil, my stencil uh, folded, but that's okay. 
So now that my stencil is down, I'm going to peel off the transfer paper and leave the actual stencil behind if I can. Why do I choose all the most difficult things? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to peel off this front grid paper now. You can see I've separated it. And I'm going to just peel this off and leave this, the vinyl on the plate. Okay. Now basically, what I want to do is just make sure that my edges are down in areas that I think that they're going to be an issue. I'm just going to take the back of my thumbnail, kind of like go along that edge. And then I'm going to take a sponge and I'm going to dab black paint all over this so that my outline stays behind. Jessica, can you grab me a, um, a pin? if we have any. So I'm just going to take a uh, black sponge, sorry, a sponge and my black paint. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to dab. I don't want it too globby here, so I'm just going to dab off to the side for a second. And I'm going to dab all over just to outline that elephant in black, okay? So it's fairly straightforward, dab, dab, dab. I'm dabbing, not rubbing, okay? You wanna make sure you're dabbing, not rubbing. And that's uh, gonna leave a really nice outline for you to fill in, almost like a coloring book at this we're making a coloring book. Oh, hey, that was bad. So see, you saw that glob that just fell. Uh, you don't panic when you do that. You just don't wanna try and wipe it off because you could actually push it underneath your vinyl. So just kind of go back and dab it. And I'm not going really heavy. That's the trick. Don't go super heavy. We don't want it really globby. So you can see that I'm creating this really nice outline. I'm going careful along the edge here. If you're nervous about how close the elephant is to the edge of your thing and you're not worried about going over it, just put a little piece of um, green painter's tape or something down there um, to block that off for you. Okay, so there's my outline. That's all you gotta do for that pretty easy so far, right? Just making sure that I can see. I'm just looking to see if there's anything that looks like right here. I can see it's a little bit light. I'm gonna go over that spot again, um, just to make sure that I have a good outline. And that's it. Once you do that, then you're gonna peel off this vinyl okay so you're gonna need a pin I've got a handy dandy pin here but you're gonna start by peeling the outside edge of this okay it's gonna be very sticky and that's okay and you're gonna peel that off and if it doesn't all come off in one it's not the end of the world Peel it off. Okay, now you don't want to rub this. If you see any like little bits of black, just give it a, a little uh, light breeze of air and that will um, get rid of that. Okay. Or you can take a dry brush. I don't recommend that though because the black is, black is kind of like, it stains bisque so you might not mean for it to actually stain, but it will. It's not so bad on the outside because we're going to glaze it, but now I'm just going to take my pin tool and I'm going to go in here and I'm going right in the middle here and pulling up, pulling off all of this vinyl. Okay. Again, 
again if it doesn't come off on one one piece not the end of the world peeling 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 it's usually better than that but I stuck it really good So we're just going to keep peeling until we get all of the vinyl off. Here we go. And then basically from here, you're going to, ooh, hey, you're going to, um, once you get all of this vinyl off, we're going to just start dotting and filling in the in between. So all of this area and stuff with dots of various sizes and various patterns. Um, there's no right or wrong. Yours will look probably completely different than mine did. And I am not going to do this entire thing with you only because um, in my sample, my sample took like, I don't know three hours of dotting to do because I just kind of was playing around and did it really zen which is kind of what we want for you to do uh, just relax with it have it have it uh, be something peaceful you can do you don't have to dot it all in one day I didn't actually my sample I started dotting uh, one day and then I finished dotting like three days later so basically what you're doing is just going to create all kinds of dots. I didn't even bring my sample to show you. And we're going to fill this whole thing in after we. So you can see how that left a really nice um, outline for you, right? It leaves a really nice, like, coloring book. A couple things you can do here if you wanted to. You could actually. Uh, instead of doing dots, one thing I really like to do is watercolor. So you can um, water down some of the paint colors and almost like flood it in to the areas if you don't want to do dots, if you want to do more watercolor. Just a, don't, oh, never mind, I got one with me. I was going to say, do we have an eraser? But there's actually literally one right in my hand right now. <laughs> on the scratcher, on the uh, pin tool. Um, something I'm going to tell you is if you do get black in areas that you don't want, like here, um, you can actually just use eraser. I like to use a little eraser and just kind of go back and forth and erase that area. Okay. See, it just takes away that little bit of color. And then if you have a dry brush. Just dry brush it off. Make sure that this paint is all dry though before you start doing that. Okay. So this will give you an outline, a really, really nice, sharp, concise outline. And then you're going to fill in all of this area with your dots. Um, I can't, for the life of me, remember what color dots I did where, but I know I did this part all pink. Uh, I think I did this like a greeny color, the leaf. Um, I did purples here and 21, the teal. And then I mixed a darker gray and did all of his head with a darker gray. So again, you can dot it any way you like. I'm just gonna show you on one side first. I'm just gonna start with, because I don't think you guys really wanna watch me peel all of this vinyl. Because <laughs> that's exciting. I'm gonna watch Sue peel vinyl. Okay, so I'm peeling all of this vinyl. Look at all that hot mess I just made. Gone. This is like when you get this going and you start dotting, it's very zen-like. It's very just uh, chillaxing. There we go. 
go. I'm going to I'm going to leave that other ear in for a second. I just want to start showing you how we did this. Uh, dot wise. And you can actually leave that on there for a day or so and go back to it. Again, do it in sections if you want. Okay? You can peel off a piece, go dot that part and then go peel a different piece off. Go dot that part, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just gonna clean up any little spots here that I see. Take my brush and dust that off. Okay, cool. So I've got my colors, and uh, I'm gonna just—I like to kind of have them with me. Again, if you want to, you could even take a little piece of paper towel and put that over part of your plate while you're dotting to put your palette on top. I'll show you what I mean. I don't have a piece of paper towel, but I'm going to use the backing of my, my thing. So I'm going to cover that side with that so that if I do drip paint, it's not going everywhere. Okay. And I'm going to start over here. I'm going to just start with some, I think I would like to do this part purple. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to start with dotting. And you can make your dots make sense to you, or you can make it completely random. Um, I am going to go out along the top, all the same size. Again, you can um, make it however you want. There's no right or wrong. It's your elephant plate, not mine. Right? So I've got my, per my one size dot in there. I'm going to have a sponge handy so I can dab off my paint. Then I'm going to go to the other end of this because it's smaller. And I'm going to do what's called walking the dots. So I'm going to start up here and I'm going to go dot, 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 dot. As it goes down, it gets smaller. Okay? So dot, oops, try that again. Dot, 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 dot. See how it gets smaller as it goes away? You could just do it all random too if you wanted to. That's totally cool as well. There's no right or wrong. You could just fill this all in with dots. You could just go dot, 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 dot. Dot, 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 dot. Like make it completely random, which also looks super awesome. Um, and you don't have to worry about it too much. Right, so I'm just filling in the area with dots just until I'm happy. Again, you can make it make complete sense to you or you can make it just random, no right or wrong. All right, so I've got that side full. Now I'm gonna go 21 here. I'm gonna go back to this end. And I think I'm gonna go, I like random dots. I'm just gonna do random. I did really specific with my last one. So I think I'm just gonna do random. And I'm just staying in the lines. Okay. And easy peasy, right? So I'm going to do this one 21 as well. Just dotting. I like walking the dots out because that gives you a various sizes of dots. You get some really small dots, some really big dots. Right, there you go. Okay. Then I think I'm gonna do this one, this lime sort of yellowy green here. I'm gonna do this part all pink. Just filling it in. So what we're gonna do when we fire this for you is we're going to fire it twice. The first time we fire it, we're gonna fire it without glazing it so that we set everything in its place. 
Then we're going to glaze just where your dots are, like where your elephant's face is, because we're using specialty glaze on the outside. We don't need to glaze all of this part. We just need to glaze where the dots are, where the elephant face. These are gonna be really hard for you to see because it's yellow on white, not super easy. But I'm just dotting this. So it's just basically throwing dots down wherever you want them to be. You can be really specific. You can make little mandalas in there. You can fill it up however you want. But I'm just going kind of random. It's so much fun. It's fun, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's just fun to to just fun to kind of make creative little dots everywhere. Miss Jessa has just come over to look. You can talk, Jessa. Okay. Everybody knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> It's I, all good. It was really zen when I was dotting that maple leaf. Plate. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, did, we no showed that maple leaf plate, didn't we? You could bring that plate over here, actually. And I can show it. Yeah, Miss Jessa did a maple leaf plate. She did a great job on it. But she, again, it was just... It was just random dotting. Okay. Yeah, this was Miss Justice's plate. If you can see that she did, um, she painted the whole thing black first, and then she started, you started with the green, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And then worked up to the red? Yep. Yeah. So she just did this really pretty, like, transition of colors, and the dots are just random. The only thing that she was really specific about was her white dots. Did you do that first? Yes. Yeah, so she did her white dots specifically first to make that pattern, and then she did the, the fill-in colors just randomly. And it's very zen to do that. It's super zen to, to it's just... So it just is, sit right? And dot. Just dot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's super fun. Sounds okay. Big. Yep, and that's the great thing about it. Um, so now I'm going into pink, and I'm doing this part here pink. Again, random not being very specific about it. Some are super huge, some are small. Uh, I like to, as I'm going back, I can, when I know that the paint is getting small, I can go and fill in some little areas with what I know are gonna be small dots, right? And then just going in and kind of dotting them down. And the randomness of it for me is what I like. I like to just be zen and like let it be what it is going to be. Your hand just kind of moves on its own automatically. Uh, it, it will if you let it. <laughs> There's a lot of people that can't let it be random, and I totally get that, but we have to learn to let go every once in a while. And that's what I like about this is because it is uh, an exercise in letting go. And just letting it be what it is. Sometimes things are a little beyond your control and that's okay. It is what it is. I saw this, I heard this meme the other day. It said, if somebody's motto is, it is what it is, be afraid of them because they don't give a care. Well, they used a different word, but you know. <laughs> That's my approach to art, by the way. It is what it is. World politics do not depend on how awesome your plate looks. So just let it be what it is. It, it will be whatever you want it to be. Or whatever it was meant to be. Right? So I'm just going to go and put some dots in some random spots that I might have missed. Go back in and fill. You can get really, like, lots of dots, or you can have them more spaced out. I like them a little more spaced out. So that's what I'm going to do for that. Now, for this green, I'm actually going to mix two colors. Uh, it didn't bring another palette, but that's okay. I'll do it right here on my thing. I'm going to scoop out some yellow right here and a little bit of this blue and I'm going to make a green this teal green here and I'm going to make this nice green okay that's the green I'm going to put in my leaf here we go 
So that's what I'm gonna use here. You could make even darker if you wanted to and make like different shades of green all the way down. That's up to you. Again, no right or wrong, no judgment. Nobody here that works here will ever look at your thing and go, oh, that's so horrible. Or, oh, that's, well, actually normally we go, that's so fantastic. <laughs> We love it when we open up the kiln, don't we, Jessa? Oh, I love opening Yeah, it's like Christmas for us. Seeing everybody's work done. Right? It's like, oh my god. It's always exciting to see how it's going to turn out. Right? So you guys give us Christmas presents by painting. <laughs> Even the poops. Even the poops, yep. <laughs> we got a fascinating poop the other day, and it was fantastic. I love doing those poop emojis. I want to paint one brown with spots of orange in it, or spots of yellow for corn. <laughs> yep, so I'm just putting some dots in here, completely random. And that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna fill in um, like the other ear. I would actually do the other ear to balance that one, or you can do a completely opposite. I don't know, but I, I'm a person of balance. So I will need to do this purple, these 21, these the lime, the 16, this the cotton candy, and then this I would make green. This I'm gonna paint, do gray dots. Um, so I'm gonna do the regular 24 gray dots here. Then on his eyes, I'm gonna actually darken up 24 by adding a little bit of black and do the dots in there. Um, same with down here. I'm going to make that a little bit darker. You can make his tusk areas a little bit darker. Um, all kinds of fun things. You can make his tusks here, whatever color you want. I can't remember for the life of me. I think I actually left mine blank. I don't remember, but that's basically all you're going to do. So then you're going to, you're going to continue putting dots in all of these areas, however it makes you happy. I think I put uh, black dots in here and then I think I put um, I can't remember if I did white dots or not I can't remember but uh, you can leave this area white which is what I'm gonna do here uh, you could even do like uh, blue dots in there with a single singular big black dot in the middle if you want no right or wrong okay then what you're gonna do once you get all of this dotted you're going to take a nice big brush you're going to take your uh, denim days glaze and you're going to paint this uh, whole outside part at least twice with um, your glaze and this is really easy to do you're just going to go right up here um, I like to do just go right up you can touch that black it's not going to be the end of the world uh, this glaze has a little tiny bit of movement so don't stress out about it okay and I'm going to just lay this down. You can go along the edge, ooh, like that, okay? And then fill in, okay? You don't want your brush to get super dry. You don't wanna hear that sound, okay? That just means that you have not enough glaze on your brush. Okay, Denim Days is a little bit thicker, so you're going to need at least two coats. Two coats is what I recommend. And uh, I do a thicker coat along the edge, and then I don't bother getting close the second time around, um, if that makes sense to you. So you can see I've got a lot of good like, glob of paint on here, making it nice and thick along that edge. Ooh, right up to that edge. Then... My second coat will be a little more haphazard, a little not so concentrated around that line. First coat, I'm gonna go nice and close to that line. Get it as close as you can. You could even go over it a little bit. Um, over here, go over that, go to that line. Don't be afraid of touching that line, it's not the end of the world. Okay. Then, your next coat, you're just gonna go back on here. Don't be so close to, like you don't have to worry about getting 
right up to that edge. See how I'm just kind of going right to the edge and feathering it in and globbing it down. And that's all you're gonna do. That's pretty much the whole plate. Just dots and then fill it in. And then you're gonna bring it to us for firing and we're gonna make it all super pretty for you. Right? Uh, you can paint the back edge of your plate with the same with the number with the um, denim days and then we're gonna fire it for you these little areas right here i just take a smaller brush and get in there with a smaller brush so you can just kind of go right in there with a smaller brush bring it in let it float in there a little bit by floating i mean almost like puddling it you puddle it in and let it do the work for you dab it down then you're gonna paint it out. And that is the elephant plate, my friends. Then we will glaze and, glaze and fire it for you. And it will be stunning. Literally just dots. I have the utmost confidence that you can do this. Okay? And you're just gonna keep dotting and painting the whole outside. I'm gonna just keep going with the outside to show you. And then I'll go and do my dots one day when I'm really needing Zen work. Some days when I'm stressed, you know, some days, cause being a business owner isn't stressful at all. <laughs> Sarcasm is real. Okay, so I'm just gonna go here on the edge. And see, I'm not too concerned if I get it on the black. Right? I have a brush that has an angle and I like using that when I'm going up against things, like when I'm trying to do a line because that, that line, that kind of like allows me to be a little more controlled into that, right? There we go. Then, and notice how I turn my plate. Don't be afraid to turn your plate to do the work that you need to do to get to the areas that you need to get to. Flooding it in, going right up to there. You notice I'm using my baby finger as a fulcrum. That's a, that's a steadying tool to kind of pivot, pivot point. And then just filling in what I need to fill in, right? So it's not that difficult. It's quite easy to do. Um, it's, a, it's a plate that should bring you joy to do. It should bring you some peace and solitude, solitude to do. Again, this little spot here, I'm just gonna take my thinner brush and go into that, pull that up into that point down and then along here I'm gonna go up into that point and pull down and then finish the rest with my big brush okay, so this is my first coat again you're gonna go back and do your second coat uh, at least two coats three is good but Two is, two is sufficient. And I try to, when I'm making these specialty glazes, I try to crisscross my, my coats. So my first pattern, or my first layer, I do in one direction. And then my second layer, I might mix it up a little bit and go across it. So as you can see here, I went sideways. So now here, I'm gonna go up, okay? So that it kind of makes the the coats blend together better okay and I'm not overly concerned about being super accurate the second coat and that's that's how you're gonna do that so you're gonna fill all of this in with gray um, and you're gonna just have fun with it relax with it make it make it enjoyable and uh, that's that. That will become a beautiful work of art afterwards. I promise, I promise, I promise. Okay, so again, you're gonna continue with this with 24. 
Um, darken up your 24 and do his eyelids. You can make his eyeballs whatever color you want. You can make this fancy with different colors. Um, and I think I left his tusks alone. I actually think I just left them completely bare. I didn't put dots in them at all, which is totally cool. And I believe I did the same thing with the eyeballs. I just left that, like the outer part of his eyes, completely um, bisque. And then we fire it and glaze it so it gets a really nice shiny white. But it's not a, a stark white, it's a really nice warm white. So that's it. That's your elephant plate. And then you're going to paint your, black, your back. You can do whatever color you want on your back. And... Um, Finish it up. Don't forget to sign your work. What, am I missing anything, Jessa? Do we think? Jessa, I mean, other than the fact that I didn't finish dotting it, but I'm going to do that another day. I just wanted to give them the heads up on how to do it. Cool. Looks cool, right? Like it's so, And it's not that difficult to do. Once you start laying down the dots, it's you get into it and it's it's just rhythmic. That's what I like about it. It's the rhythmic of it, right? And that's denim days on the outside. That's, that's denim days, cool, so. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's what you're gonna do, okay? So again, I left my tusks unpainted. I left the sides of his eyeballs unpainted. I believe I gave mine blue eyes, but you can give them whatever color eyes you want. This is gonna be all 24. The eyelids, you're gonna darken up 24 by adding a little bit of black to it. You can make this as fancy as you want, um, just with dots. Yeah, I'd probably take more dots down the trunk too. So. Yeah, oh yeah, I did all of this with um, yeah. just gray. Like I did all of his face and all Ooh, down here with dots. 24. Yeah. Gray dots or? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah just dots, like 24 dots. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I did every all of his whole face is dots. Um, so this is all 24 dots. So basically, I'll show you. Um, what I liked to do here is I actually took the back end of a big brush like this and I went into 24 and I actually laid down some really big dots first. Okay, I did random big dots. Then I lay, I like to have some really big dots on his face and down his trunk. Then I believe I actually circled my big dots with little dots oh, nice. yeah so um then i have that and then i took on mine the dotting tool and i went around each one of these big dots with little dots so i went north south east west in between so it radiated out from those big dots so then I did all of my big dots with these circle dots around it. And I just kept getting bigger with my circles until they kind of crisscrossed over each other. Cool. Right? Because then my next row, uh, I went out from there in between. So I went dot, 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 like in between that last row of dots. Mm -hmm. And then I just kept getting bigger and bigger until the next row, until they started touching each other. Yeah. And then you can really uh, radiate out and make some really cool patterns. I think I've got a super meditative piece to do. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super meditative. Um, you could just, again, go in between all of those other last row of dots that you made. And just keep doing that until you fill up his whole darn face okay I like doing that how you can have like just randomly lay down some big dots and then do a very concise pattern around those big dots because it kind of makes the best of the both worlds right so again right here where this one would be I'm gonna go north south East I can't do because it's pretty much already right there. So we'll just kind of combine those two. West, another dot there, and a dot there, and then out from there. Doink, doink, right? So that's all I did. Um, I hope that you have fun dotting. Just relax with it. Bless you. Relax with it. Have fun with it. And just fill his entire face up like that. And then do his eyeballs, like I said, his eyebrows, a little bit darker. So add a little bit of 
black to your gray and dot that and just keep going, okay? All right, guys, hope that you have a fantastic day and stay turtly awesome. Bye.